Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and we're going to look at even more powerful effects in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you work within the Adobe ecosystem of audio video, then you probably know that primarily you're using Premiere Pro for video and Audition for audio. Well, Adobe keeps taking some of the cream of the crop stuff out of Audition and putting it in Premiere Pro. Now we've got some amazing new, really important effects right native inside Premiere Pro. That means there's less need to jump over to, Premier, to Audition. Let's have a look. So the first one I want to look at is adaptive noise. And I'm going to play this back. You'll hear quite a bit of noise. When I first started Ride, I was uh, really taken with her ability. So in the, you can do this two ways. In the effects, if you type in noise, you'll see the new adaptive noise reduction. Or, and this is my preferred way of working, is to open up this area here in the audio track mixer. If you don't see the audio track mixer, go to the window menu, audio track mixer. So there it is. And twirl this down and you'll be able to see plugins in this top section. There's a little triangle in here. We'll go down to noise and there's the new adaptive noise reduction. Doesn't look like much, but if you double click on the name, you'll open this up. This is the same noise reduction right from Adobe Audition. Incredibly powerful. Adaptive means that it will adapt to that particular clip that it's listening to. So now everything on audio track one will have this noise reduction. So you don't put everything on there. You put, apply that to the track where you have the noise. And it also needs to listen to the clip. So um, you'll always notice that whenever you hit play, you'll hear noise and then you'll hear the effect of the noise removal. So it starts a little bit listening and then it clamps down. There's lots of choices uh, that you can, you can mess around with to fine tune the noise removal. Don't just turn this on and it doesn't work and, and throw it away. Look deep inside because this has been a powerful uh, plugin inside Adobe Audition for a long time. I'm going to go to a heavy noise reduction. Go back to the beginning and hit play. When I first started Ride, I was uh, really taken with her ability. She has it. When I first started Ride, I was uh, really taken with her ability. So I don't have a very long example here, so I've just duplicated. But you hear, after initially it listens to the sound and removes the noise, the remainder of the tracks the noise is gone. Oh, I can fine tune this, but I just wanted to show you the, the adaptive noise reduction plugin now in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2017. All right, what else do we have? I'm going to use that same adaptive noise reduction. You can see that here. I've applied it to this clip and the new parametric EQ. If you have watched my previous tutorial, and I'll put a link uh, to that, my tutorial on removing room echo, guess what I used in Audition? Beyond just noise removal, I used this parametric EQ. And if you've ever gone to the parametric EQ before, let me just show you this. It, it's still there, but it's now called single parametric EQ. And if you come from the audio world, it's pretty disappointing. You basically have one single parametric EQ. So we're not using that anymore. We're using a real true parametric EQ. What's the idea behind this? Well, the way a parametric EQ works is there's low frequencies to the left, high frequencies over on the right, and you're either reducing the frequency or uh, increasing the frequency. And you can see here, I'm reducing it by minus 4.5, minus 29.8, and minus 33.4, and then a high pass at minus 14.7. So this is the same formula that I used in my audition demo. I've just saved it here. So um, I'm gonna turn these off, and you can do that by clicking on the little effects for each one of them. And you can hear it's pretty echo. All right, I'm recording this with the built-in 5D Mark III. This is a way that I'm going to turn this on now. Audio and they want to fix it. And the problem is caused so by there's the noise reduction. 60 to 10 feet now. away, 
and we're in a reflective surface. So this is my kitchen. So it's, it's not perfect, but it definitely reduces those particular frequencies, which are really annoying. Like I said, I'm not going to go through how to use a parametric EQ, but I'll have a link to my uh, uh, re remove uh, room echo tutorial so you can see that. One, sometimes you want to get rid of one really annoying frequency and pull that down. Okay, so that's another one that we have. Let's go over to automatic click remover. If you've ever had something with clicks and pops and you didn't want to go through to every single one and remove the click, remove the pop, this does it automatically by listening to the track and removing them. I'll play it without. And this one over here. So that one's a little bit more subtle. So again, I'm going to go to the track and add it as a, uh, a track mixer effect. So automatic click remover. I'll double click on that. Right, let's go to a uh, medium reduction. And remember, we're not getting rid of the, the uh, hiss in here. We're getting rid of the clicks and pops. There it's bypassed. The next one, bypassed. You hear the clicks, turn it on. Bypass, turned on. It doesn't affect the highs. It doesn't affect the attack transients of any of the sounds in there. It's just built to find clicks and remove them. Pretty good. All right. What else do we have? Over here, I'm going to use the dyna dynamic processing and studio reverb. And this one I'll do on track two. So this is in our amplitude and compression, dynamics processing. Double click on this. And this has two different settings, dynamics and settings, and a bunch of different uh, defaults. I'm going to jump right down to this soft limit, minus 12 dB. It's going to turn on a bunch of settings for us, and it's going to hit this high area in here. Play a this motorcycle back. motorcycle journey through the world's highest Himalayan mountains. I'll turn it off. The Royal Desert State of Rajasthan requires meticulous Turn planning, it on. painstaking organization, and judicious preparations. You could also turn the spline curves on. Right now they're just turned off, so it's a square, but you might recognize this as kind of like a curves control inside Photoshop. And the way to learn this is to just go through and, and uh, choose some of, of these presets in here. And they've got things like de-essers, uh, a bunch of music choices in here. There's noise gates, so there is a, a limiter in here that you can use for noise gating. What, that, what a noise gate is primarily used for is to attenuate noise or things you don't want or remove them, but not really, well, remove is probably not the, the right word. It's as if somebody had their finger on the volume and they would wait for something to happen and then when it finished, it would turn it down. So the noise gate opens up and down. It does require a little bit of, of uh, attention to detail when you are using a noise gate to make it sound natural. Usually if you turn noise gates up way too much, then you'll, you'll get a pumping sound, a very artificial sound. So now we've got our soft limit. Now let's add a little bit of studio reverb in here. And what I do want to show you is let's, instead of adding the reverb in another effect, let's add a submix. What the heck is a submix? Well, if, if the, the voiceover is on one track and the, and the effect or the reverb is on another track completely, then you've got two independent controls. That's the way to work. So let's go over to the bottom section here. So these are the effects and we're going to create a submix for that track. So create stereo submix and you'll see it shows up right there. And this is how much information we're sending out, how much signal we're sending out to that. So I'm going to crank this up and on this submix, I'll add the brand new studio reverb. Again, I'll double click on the name and here we've got a bunch of different reverbs. Let's just see what vocal reverb medium sounds like. Finding a reliable motorcycle, tools and spares, arranging inner line permits, lugging. 
So I, I'm gonna close the top area up. Now watch what happens when I reduce the volume of the submix. Journey through the world's highest Himalayan mountains. So there's the original. The desert state of Rajasthan requires meticulous planning, painstaking organization, and judicious preparations. Finding a reliable... And there's a bunch of presets in here too, all the way to a great hall. Motorcycle, tools and spares. And there's a mastering reverb, which is uh, more for music, but it's a little bit more subtle. Arranging inner line permits. And uh, something simple as room ambience. Lugging all your stuff on the bike and searching for comfortable. Now, obviously, I wouldn't be doing this on, on a typical voiceover unless I had a reason to do this. This is more for sound design. You're bringing in a bunch of sound effects and foley and, and things, and you want them to sound more natural. Make a submix, add a reverb, and then point all of the things that should be going to the reverb into the submix. Ooh, hey, that's good. That's also more efficient. I'm only using one reverb effect instead of multiple reverbs, one for each track. All right. Uh, that is the new list of the new effects from Adobe Audition now in Premiere Pro. Excellent stuff. It, it, I mean, these are staple tools that are in Audition and they're there for a reason. They're some of the top effects. They're now in Adobe Premiere Pro, CC 2017. Well, hopefully you found this informative. Uh, if you're new to Video Revealed, take a moment and subscribe. You wanna support us more? Head on over to Patreon. We really do appreciate everybody that's supporting. If you're used to me, you know that I answer uh, your comments and, and uh, messages right away because I love this community. I'm here to help everyone out and you can help us out. And until next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking and sounding your best.